So this is uh, a picture that was given to me my, by my aunt maybe six or seven years ago. Um, and it has been in my office uh, since. So this is a picture of my great grandparents. Um, so I think this picture was probably taken 60 or 70 years ago. And I think I put it in my office because it just shows how much opportunities we have had compared to the opportunities that they have had at that time. So I think there's not a road there. I don't think there's electricity poles there. And you compare to us and our internets and our phones and all of the resources that we have. And even in terms of education, I think, you know, so they probably had very limited opportunities to travel or for education. So I think this is just a sign of how Ireland has probably progressed in general and the opportunities that we have been given. And, and were these people, were they farming or? So they would have, they would have been farmers. Uh, so, you know, very small farms. Everybody would have a field here and then another field down the road and somewhere else. So they would have been farmers, uh, cattle and sheep, most likely. Um, but they also would have been fisher men. Okay. Uh, so there's Brandon Creek, which is just around the corner from here as well. That's where St. Brendan set off to discover America from in his, in his little canoe. So they would go out from there in the little uh, navogues and they would go out fishing, catch salmon, pollock. So and then put them in salt barrels for the winter and keep them there. And they, 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 that would be their food for the or their fridge for their. It for really the does sound like you're describing something from another era, another, particularly in Ireland. Like, in, you know, if you went back to this exact spot now, it would look entirely different I'm sure. Not entirely different really? actually, that same road is there, that house is being renovated okay. by their great grandson I suppose as well, um, but there is electricity poles, <laughs> there is sewerage, there is Wi-Fi, there's broadband, yeah so it's quite a busy road, it's part of the Wild Atlantic Way now. Okay, road, okay. So it's yeah. busy. But yeah, this is not oh, this is not a thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 50, 60 years ago, maybe. That's amazing, all it is. Amazing. Yeah. We really have, Ireland really has changed. So what's your name? My name is Brendan Kennedy. I'm a professor of pharmacology in the Conway Institute in UCD. And my research is related to uh, vision, uh, how vision occurs, blindness, uh, genes that are associated with blindness, looking for drugs that can prevent blindness or restore vision and also looking at cancer of the eye. Okay, so how on earth do these things get? What are these? Why would somebody like you studying such a exotic sounding thing and a thing that obviously requires a lot of equipment and technology, what are these? So th these are very simple um, patterns of black and white stripes, but I would also say they are very effective in what we use them for. So we are interested in under looking at vision. We're interested in drugs that can restore vision or gene approaches that can restore vision. So you can look at different aspects of vision, but the most important one to us is actually vision itself. So we use a zebrafish model, which are small tropical fish, and we're able to uh, use these to look at forms of blindness in these fish, but also drugs that are able to restore vision in the fish. So the key question there is how do you look at vision in a fish? How do you measure vision in a, fi in a fish? Um, so we can't give them eye charts. We can't do ask them to feed back and tell us what color they see. So instead we use what are called behavioral assays. And the, the, the fish will be put in a drum at the bottom of this. And then this will be put on a motor and this drum will be rotated. So the black and white stripes will move around and a fish that has good vision will track the movement of the stripes with its eyes. And that's called the optokinetic response. So it's something that we also, the optometrists use in humans as well, is the ability to track the stripes. And this is the easiest one to see. It's the biggest stripes, the biggest contrast. And then as we get to smaller stripes, it's more difficult to see them. And we can also make it gray and white, so it's even more difficult to see the contrast. Or we also have stripes that have black and green or black and red or black and blue. So, and are you actually able to measure the fish's movement, like the sort of nuance of how well it is tracking this more difficult one to the way it's tracking the easier one? Are you actually able to kind of 
measure that or track that in some way? Yeah, so we, we, have, a quant we have a simple quantitative way, which is we rotate the drum 30 seconds one direction mm -hmm. and we count the number of times they move their eyes in 30 seconds. And then we rotate the drum 30 seconds the opposite way and we count the number of times they have a full response and that's the number of saccades that they have okay. per minute. Okay. And as the stripes get more difficult, they will have less saccades. But also if we have a model of blindness, they may not respond to the lower stripes or the lower contrast. And again, then we take this as a reverse where we look then to find a drug or a gene intervention which is able to take a model of blindness and restore its vision. And we can see that because it's significantly increased the number of saccades or it's able to see the middle pattern of stripes where it couldn't before. It's still not maybe able to see the lowest. So mm -hmm. it's a bit like all, it's to improve or preserve the, the vision that they might have had. And you're, you've actually been able to do that to restore vision. Yeah, so uh, there's a, there's a, the, the pun here is that doing something like this is a fishing trip, right? <laughs> so this is what reviewers would often say, how would you find, a, how can you find a drug out of the millions of drugs that are out there that are able to restore vision? And until we had one, we could never say we could do it. But we have found the first one of those maybe eight years ago, probably at this point. And we've continued to work and find other drugs or to take those drugs and work with um, computational uh, chemists where they'll design it, they'll modify the structure or they'll, uh, they'll search a database of all of the drugs and say, this one is similar to your one and we'll take that drug and then we'll go back again. So yeah, at this stage we have several classes of drugs that are able to restore vision in that model. That it's have. incredible, it's absolutely incredible. So all of these sort of very ordinary looking objects are objects that, that you use in your lab. What do you do with that? So these, these, <laughs> these devices are, uh, or these tools, they're all part of the, the fish facility. So we maintain the zebrafish in, uh, in, in stocks. And so there's lots of them kept in individual tanks and you have to have a water supply that comes into the tanks. You have to have the water come out. It has to be cleaned up. It has to be filtered and then has to be sent back around again. So it's like a recirculating water system mm -hmm. and with water systems, things can break. And so you might need to tighten something <laughs> in case all the water comes all on the floor. Yeah. And that's what that's used for. That's what the wrench might be used for, probably to fix something. Yeah. Uh, and what do you? What's this gadget here? So I think that this I can't claim any any. I, I can't claim that I thought of this. So we have to go and feed the fish uh, twice a day, and this is pellet food that they like. Um, and previously we were using a, a little spatula, and you would have to open the jar, and you'd go and you'd put a spatula of food into each one. And somebody came up with this idea. This is a, a seed filler, I think is what it's called. So if you're planting seeds, you just press this and it'll plant a seed. So this is the one that's broken. Yes, <laughs> it's broken that I have to fix. So, 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 yeah. so you can just press this and yeah. it'll release the food into the tank so you can more efficiently go around. And it's more controlled because they'll probably get the same amount of food in each tank. 